Welcome to the airbrush diagram video. The airbrush can be broken down or separated into two main sections or categories. The air feed section is the section shown here and it's where air gets fed through this part of the airbrush. The paint feed section is the section shown here and that's where paint is fed through the airbrush. The amount of air that can be fed through the airbrush can be controlled through a couple of methods. The air pressure regulator does just that. It regulates air pressure. Do not touch the air pressure regulator as it is set to the correct amount, which is between 20 and 40 PSI. Too much air pressure could ruin the airbrush and not enough and the paint won't come out. Air volume is also controlled by the air trigger. Depress the air trigger all the way for a lot of airflow and depress it a little for a little airflow. The air feed section of the airbrush requires little or no maintenance since air does not dry like paint does. Let's take a closer look at the paint feed section of the airbrush. It consists of three main parts. The paint cup, which is easy to tell because it's a cup that holds paint. And the paint needle, which is easily recognizable by its pointed end, much like a needle. And finally, the paint cap, which looks a lot like a dunce cap and is placed over the top of the paint needle. When the air trigger is depressed and air is fed through the airbrush, it creates a vacuum and builds up pressure inside the paint jar. This pressure forces the paint up through the paint jar, through the paint needle, into the paint cap, and into the air cap where the air and paint meet. Here the air pushes the paint away from the airbrush and onto the paper, or whatever is being painted. Adjusting the paint cap clockwise creates a greater opening between the paint needle and the paint cap much like removing a hat from a head. This creates a larger opening at the end of the paint cap, thus allowing more paint to be fed through the airbrush and creating a broad spray. Adjusting the paint cap counterclockwise closes this opening, thus creating a finer or narrow spray. For the last section of our airbrush diagram video, we'll take a closer look at the paint cap and needle and some information on keeping them clean. When the air trigger is pressed, paint comes up through the paint needle, comes out the hole in the paint needle, fills up the paint cap, and then gets sprayed out onto the paper. If we didn't clean the airbrush out, paint would dry in these areas here shown in the paint needle, and also in these areas in the paint cap, causing it to clog and creating a lot of problems. This is why it's very important to keep the airbrush clean. You can keep the airbrush clean by following two simple steps. First, run water through the airbrush for about 15 to 20 seconds. Next, close the paint cap all the way. This squeezes any paint out that was left in the paint cap and keeps it from drying in the areas that are shown here. Keeping the airbrush clean takes very little of your time and saves a lot of time for the teacher and his or her aide. Thank you for watching.